Hi, there is Supriyo. In this video, we are going to discuss everything about differentiated banks in India. We are going to take a close look at the payment banks and the small finance banks and each and everything that you need to know about both of them. And let us first uh, begin with a discussion about the differentiated banking system in India and how it had actually originated. So basically what happened was uh, the Reserve Bank of India, they actually formed a committee and the purpose of this committee was to look at how we can bring banking to the unserved and the underserved sections of society. And because we had so many failures in financial inclusion, they wanted a best plan forward. And this man, Nachiket Moore, gave them the solution for their problems. So Nachiket Moore committee, this is the most important committee. So if anybody asks you, which is the committee that actually uh, started off this differentiated banking system in India, then it was Nachiket Moore committee. So the full name of this committee is the Committee on Comprehensive Financial Services for Small Businesses and Low Income Households. So it's a long name and we can remember it as the Nachiket Moore committee. So basically this committee, they said that in different countries, we have differentiated banks. So one bank does not uh, perform all activities, but there are different segments of banks. So one bank, it will be doing some community work. One bank, they will be doing some payments work. Another bank will be doing some custodian work and different types of banks like this. And this system had actually increased the financial inclusion in those countries. So RBI decided that why not give it a try in our country. And so Nachiket Moore Committee's recommendations, they actually prescribed the start of the payment bank and the small finance banks and also two other banks we are just going to talk about it so basically what you have to remember is that uh, the Nachiket Moore committee was responsible for this differentiated banking system and all the payment bank licenses Nachiket Moore was the person who headed the committees that gave out those payment bank licenses and also there was the Usha Thorat committee so this committee they gave out the licenses for the small finance banks so remember both of the names and their context and uh, of course what was the the main reason as we discussed it was for furthering financial inclusion so providing small savings accounts payments or remittance services to migrant labor force remember this that all the migrant workers so in the pandemic situation we saw that the migrant labor force they are very much vulnerable and to help these uh, people we actually wanted that they have some access to financial services and that was the main goal and also the low income households etc and these uh, differentiated banks they would have limited banking activity this is very very important limited banking activity and also limited regulation so they are not supposed to comply with all the important things that the universal banks have to comply with remember we have already studied about universal banks so universal banks are mostly all the big banks that we have all the public sector banks the private sector banks the banks that do all the kinds of activities that we talk about normally but the pair differentiated banks they are doing just limited banking activities and initially RBI had proposed four different uh, types of these banks so they were payment banks small finance banks these two we are talking in detail they were also the custodian banks and the wholesale and long-term finance bank now uh, these two different banks we are not going to discuss that much because in India they have not yet begun but I'll just give you a brief idea so this custodian bank that you see so custodian bank this actually means a bank which holds securities and actually uh, to conceptualize this you can think about a fund manager something like that so we have fund managers right when we go for a mutual fund or any kind of investment a fund manager is managing your money so basically custodian banks are kind of like fund managers for different banks so they will be taking all the securities and these universal banks they are investing in different markets in different countries so the custodian bank they are keeping the security safe and they are always uh, complying with all the compliance requirements of different countries and different geographies and that is the main work that custodian banks do so it's a high level kind of a work and also we have the wholesale and long term finance bank now this bank is actually very important in indian context because 
for the infrastructure projects that we have this bank can actually help those infrastructure projects because this bank it was actually conceptualized by RBI to help in those infra projects so they would be giving long term funds to those uh, projects and they would oversee it over a long term horizon so these banks are typically very big and RBI had said that uh, for WLTF banks you are going to need a capital of 1000 crore so 1000 crore and those banks will not be accepting any savings accounts they will just be accepting the term deposits and the current accounts and uh, minimum will be 10 crore so minimum amount that you need to open a current account or a term deposit in the WLTF banks will be 10 crore so they are huge banks and managing huge projects as of now they are not operational so custodian banks and WLTF banks we have not started but payment banks and uh, small finance banks are going on so uh, for the payment banks and small finance banks they are actually sharing the regulation between different acts so there are three main acts involved so remember these names the banking regulation act of 1949 and you have the companies act of 2013 and the reserve bank of india act of 1934 and also remember that the payment banks and small finance banks are uh, actually governed by section 22 of the banking regulation act and they are also formed as uh, public limited companies under the companies act of 2013 so these are the regulations that you need to remember and uh, now let us come to the payment banks and we are going to take a deep dive into the exact things that you need to remember so for payment banks the most important thing to remember is that they cannot give loans this is very very important no payment bank can get into the loan business and this sets them apart from the other types of banks and the maximum deposit that these payment banks can actually take is 1 lakh rupees now this is also very very important that the deposit it has to be in the form of a savings account remember this they will be able to open savings bank accounts up to rupees 1 lakh only now recently there has been some talk of increasing this limit to 5 lakh because uh, earlier what they had said they had said that the DIC GC limit was actually 1 lakh right the deposit insurance credit guarantee corporation so they would insure 1 lakh per bank so uh, that is why the deposit was capped at 1 lakh now they are saying that since it has increased to 5 lakh maybe they are uh, going to increase it I just told you because you should know that these are the developments that are happening and of course these payment banks they can issue ATMs very important because uh, if you don't have ATMs how are you going to draw out the money right and you are also going to get debit cards that is also something that is allowed and the minimum capital that you need for a payment bank to be formed is 100 crore rupees so remember this amount very important minimum net worth is 100 crore rupees to set up a payment bank and of course there are no fixed deposits or recurring deposits this is very important no fixed deposit and no recurring deposit in our payment banks because the business is such that you cannot give much interest rate to the users and uh, it is not going to be feasible for them and of course no credit card this is a no brainer because if they cannot give loans how are they going to give you that credit card because it is a type of revolving credit so no credit cards are allowed and you also have to maintain the cash reserve ratio in the payments bank understand these things very very carefully because this is how the business of that payment bank is going to be so uh, they have to maintain the cash reserve ratio they have to keep aside that 3% that all the other banks have to keep aside and 75% of all the funds that the payment bank gets they have to keep as SLR bonds so they have to invest it in the government securities now SLR is the statutory liquidity ratio we are going to discuss that in depth right now just remember that these are very safe instruments and very low interest rate you can get out of it so they are the most secure investments and 75% of the money has to be parked in those SLR bonds and the rest amount of money it can be parked with the scheduled commercial banks so you can keep it as FDs in the scheduled commercial bank so you can understand in this line itself you can understand how difficult the business is because you have to maintain CRR you have to maintain 75% as SLR eligible bonds and then the rest you have to park with the scheduled commercial banks and this is why the revenue model is not so strong for payment banks and they are tying up with different kinds of banks to offer some insurance products and other things but still they are not getting that much of uh, good opportunities for investments and now the promoter stake so the promoter stake has to be 40% for 5 years if it is uh, greater than 40% then you can bring it down to 40% by 5 years and uh, so that is the 40% and then 
30 percent by the 10 years so by 10 years you have to bring down your promoter stake to 30 percent and 26 percent by 12 years so this is a phased reduction and you have to maintain it and the voting rights the maximum voting rights per investor is capped at 10 percent and uh, just note that this 10 percent it can be raised to 26% maximum with prior approval of the Reserve Bank of India. And if you want to buy more than 5% shares in a payment bank, then you will be needing the prior approval of Reserve Bank of India. So that is also important. And uh, also very important, NRI deposits are not allowed. So non-resident Indians, they cannot invest in the payment banks. So it is disallowed right now. And uh, right now, uh, the 25% branches must be in unbanked areas. Now understand that branches are not a concept that is very much used in the payment banks because they have access points they do not uh, have these kinds of traditional bank branches so those access points also 25% you have to keep within unbanked areas this is very important and the CRAR this is also something that we are going to discuss later on in the basal norms so capital to risk weighted assets ratio it has to be 15% that is maintained so just make a note of these figures we are going to discuss those things later on and uh, these payment banks they are mainly going to do the bill payments and the cashless transactions and another very important development is that the payment banks can become small finance banks after five years of continuous operation and they also need to just fulfill the eligibility criteria so we are going to look at that and along with payment banks the uh, UCBs the urban cooperative banks so the UCBs they have also been allowed and they can also become small finance banks uh, based on the same eligibility criteria five years also remember the FDI norms so as per the FDI norms 74 percent they can uh, have FDI foreign direct investment in the payment banks and also in the small finance banks. so this is the same as the private sector banks that we already talked about FDI norms nothing changes and of course if you look at the entities that have been given the licenses so these 11 entities were at first given the license to start their payment banks but four of them have dropped out and right now we have these seven remaining but uh, if you uh, look very closely then you will understand that uh, out of these seven only four are actually mainly operational so Airtel Payments Bank it was the first payment bank in India so the first operational payment bank and then we have the Paytm Payments Bank the Fino Payment Bank and also the India Post Payment Bank which is the only payment bank that is 100% owned by the government of India. So this is the current scenario and uh, many of these payment banks they are not able to take forward their business properly and even the India Post Payment Bank and the Paytm Payment Bank they want to become uh, small finance banks that we just talked about that they can just transform into small finance banks and uh, that will actually help them in their business. So that's the current scenario that we have and another thing that you need to remember is you might have seen that Paytm Payments Bank has uh, started some fixed deposits kind of system. So how are they offering fixed deposits when we are saying that no FD is allowed? So basically they have tied up with Indus Ind Bank and with that arrangement they are giving you fixed deposits. So they are quite smart and uh, they have a good handle on the business but most of the payment banks they are really struggling. So that brings us to the small finance banks which are still in a much better position. So for the small finance banks just remember one important thing is that your payment banks and even your urban cooperative banks can become a small finance bank so as long as they have the eligibility criteria they can become so they must have the minimum capital of 200 crore because 200 crore you need minimum to set up the small finance bank and also there are other eligibility criteria for the on tap banking license that you're going to get 10 years of experience in banking industry and all the other things but but mostly this 200 crore is important and also for the urban cooperative banks the UCBs uh, RBI has said that if the UCB has 100 crore capital then also it can go forward and become a small finance bank but in five years this capital has to be increased to 200 crore so 200 crore remains the limit for the uh, small finance bank and uh, of course for the small finance banks what happens is the area of their coverage is limited but they are uh, able to take 
deposits from the public and they can also give the loans so both deposits and loans are allowed for the small finance bank and this is the most important difference with the payment banks and so the business is much better here and uh, they have a lot of msme focus so they must give 50% of all loans up to rupees 25 lakh so remember this that 50% of the loans that a small finance bank is actually giving they must have value up to rupees 25 lakh so maximum 25 lakh will be the ticket size of all those 50% loans that are given by the small finance bank this is very important and you can understand why they have actually said this because they want the loans to go not to big industrialists but to actually the small people the small businessmen the small uh, farmers and all the other people who are the focus uh, areas of the small finance bank and uh, this will actually help the uh, bottom section of society and also 75 percent of the adjusted net bank credit nbc has to be maintained in the psl target the priority sector lending so again priority sector lending we are going to talk about in a future session and uh, just remember that 75 percent they have to maintain in priority sector lending and uh, 40 percent is the normal psl target and 35 percent is uh, uh, in the part of the psl in which that sfb has some edge so the part of the uh, business that they are most comfortable with they are most successful with they can go and they can lend 35 percent but it has to be in the priority sector lending category the PSL category so total 75% has to be maintained as PSL loans and uh, the exposure norms this is also very important 10% to the single borrower and 15% to the group borrower and the promoter stake this will be the same as the uh, uh, payment bank so I'm not repeating it 40% for 5 years then 30% 10 years 26% 12 years so there's nothing more to talk about that and 15% CRAR again the same as payment banks and also 25 5% of branches must be in unbanked areas. This is also the same thing and small finance banks they actually have proper branches just like any normal bank so their 25% branches must be in unbanked areas so that's uh, we already talked about the 25% thing and the important thing is that the UCBs the urban cooperative banks they can also become the small finance banks and also remember that small finance banks they have a lot of lucrative business so uh, right now just take a look at the 10 small finance banks that are operating in India so these are the list of the small finance banks and just make a note of them these were the ones that got their license and uh, remember that capital small finance bank was the first small finance bank of india so it had started as capital local area bank and it became the capital small finance bank and as i was saying that they have a more lucrative business because these small finance banks they can become scbs scheduled commercial banks this is very important to remember that the small finance banks if they are having great performance if they are able to show the numbers then rbi they can go ahead and approach and they can talk about the on tap licensing so we have already talked about the on tap licensing 500 crores they will be needing and they can transition into small finance banks see the main thing is that the payment banks they do not have a great business model they have to rely on the transaction charges so any kind of remittance any kind of payments that they do they have to take a percentage of the cut and mainly they have to resort to selling insurance products or other things but in small finance banks it is still a lot better so you understand these payment banks and small finance banks they are not for everybody and that is why we do not see a lot of them but hopefully in the future rbi's vision of financial inclusion will actually be helped by these entities and we are also going to see the custodian banks the wholesale long-term finance banks and everything so that in the long term financial inclusion can go forward and india can have 100 percent banking so with that hope let us end this session i hope that you learned something from this video and that it was beneficial to you if you enjoyed this video please leave a like and share it with your friends and if you want to see more of this kind of content please click on the subscribe button and do not forget to click the bell icon so that you my friend do not miss any future update i'll see you in the next video bye bye